What is up guys, welcome back to another Arena of Valor video and today we'll be trying to complete the AIC reviews finally. I know guys, I'm sorry that I, I kind of messed this up. I kind of was too slow in uploading these AIC um, reviews. Um, for the next couple tournaments, I will definitely be trying to pump out this content much faster. Maybe even do double or triple uploads on some days if there's really good games. Because it really isn't fun watching a tournament um, like a month later when it's already done, right? But I still want to finish this, so I'm going to be showing um, maybe one, two, maybe even three games of this final. Probably only one or two, uh, because this final was pretty one-sided. Now, luckily the games themselves weren't too one-sided. And this game I found particularly interesting because there is... Um, a lot of action going on. There is FL ADC on his very signature Cricknack pick. He was one of the first guys actually to bust out this Cricknack regularly in pro play um, back when he was buffed. And there's also Ellie on his um, Cafferty, which is also something that not a lot of teams still pick. Ellie, one of the guys who still plays her quite a, quite a decent amount. So um, yeah. And there's also gonna be a lot of back and forth. So uh, also XB on his Ignis, which is also a hero that I really like to see. It's just a very exciting hero. It provides so much. It can turn around team fights with his CC a lot. So this should be a quite interesting game. You can already see Team Flash leading one kill ahead, Dragon ahead, only 300 gold ahead though. But you can see Overfly absolutely demolishing Go in this um, lane right now so far. But of course, early game against the Yena, level 4, as a kill growth, you, you will not stand a chance at all. Um, just very dominant in that matchup, Yena, at least early levels. I think as soon as kill growth hits his level 8, level 9, he will be able to counteract with his juiced up S2, right? You can see XB is getting caught out a lot. It seems like he will end up dying, and yes, he does end up dying. Um, his shield got procced, his purify was used, was not enough to make him survive. One kill for one, traded on both sides. Um, Yina ended up dying as well. So, pretty even game. As I said, only a 400 gold lead, 300 gold lead around that um, for Team Flash right now, even though they got the dragon. So that just means um, Buriram is just doing a very good job farming, last hitting um, Darcy, um, I mean Lindis ends up dying there, not quite in time with that Xenia ult to save her. However, you have to see FLADC already taking apart this game. As I said, very signature pick for him, the Cricknack, and you, you just have to admit, he is really damn good at it. 2-0 in the um, AIC final against the um, potentially the best team in the world. It depends who will win this, right? I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys already know it, but um, yeah. So, ADC still doing a very good job. Unfortunately, we couldn't check his personal view. Um, they were showing it again, the Annette. I don't know why they keep showing the support point of view. Um, I think a lot of viewers really want to see the mid laner, the side lane, um, the Slayer lane or the jungler most of the time um, Sometimes maybe you want to see the support if it's a Krizix or something, but I don't think we would want to spectate Annette here Not that he's playing bad. He's doing a good job. It's just I think the 2-0 jungler is a little bit more exciting, you know and um, Yeah, as I'm talking a bunch of gibberish they are moving their um, team onto the Ooh, this is a very nice little engage there by um, by the tree guy. I forgot his name. Um, I seriously forgot his name. I'm still forgetting his name. I still cannot come up with it. So we'll just call him tree guy for the rest of this. He tried to engage there, was not quite able to ult a little bit out of range there. And um, ooh, that's a that's a very nice little Annette ult able to disengage that team fight, able to get Team Flash out of harm's way. Now they are, um, Annette again doing a good job providing vision onto that red buff. They get the timer for that red buff, so we'll see if they will use that and invade it later on. Lindis absolutely getting demolished. 
I mean, what else is gonna happen? Um, Quick Knight versus Lindis. I'm sure you guys know how that matchup goes in the jungle. He just keeps killing you all over, all over again. And um, the Xenial is a very nice support choice to help counteract that with the ult, but so far, not really working out. Um, if the Quick Knight gets too far ahead, he will just one-shot you through that Xenial heal, through that damage reduction that his ult provides. So, um, yeah. FL ADC definitely uh, doing a very good job so far. Now, are they gonna go for a dragon? They are letting it up. They are kind of cautious around uh, the dragon. By the way, I still cannot remember the tree guy's name. I don't know what is going on. I've been recording a lot of videos today, so maybe that is that. But um, <laughs> still pretty funny. Anyway, so... You can see it's actually a sideline tree. That's pretty funny. I mean, that is kind of the usual lane that you see him more often nowadays. You don't really see him as a support as much anymore. Um, you don't see him in general as much anymore. But he is still a decent pick, I would say, in a lot of um, for a lot of team comps. I remember when he used to be the most broken hero. That was that was a fun time. Um, you can see that Yena is doing an amazing job. Actually, triggers the death sickle and. They are able to uh, finish it off with Lindis running after the ADC and killing him off. So that's a nice little shutdown there. They got his death sickle as well. Very well done by Yena there. And this Yena is going to get the top tower as well. She is absolutely carrying this game. She is so far keeping them inside the game. Getting the tower, winning her lane and getting a kill onto the jungler. Ellie ends up dying here. Gets caught out, a little bit overextended there on his Caffany, of course, very, very squishy and a low mobility hero. So you gotta be much more careful than that. But yeah, you can see that the waves are still kind of in uh, uh, Buriram's favor. Um, they are playing very well around these waves. That's how they are able to still be in this game. They are even ahead 100 gold, even though they're behind in dragons, they're behind in towers. Um, actually, they're not behind in towers. It's They're actually ahead in towers, but they are also in, behind in kills. And they're still able to just farm well because they are just using... Um, they're just clearing those waves as fast as possible, making them push inside the enemies, um, able to maybe steal a jungle camp because of that. And as I am talking, the team fight breaks out. Two people die on Team Flash's side and none die on Buriram's side, so they are gonna for sure get this tower for free. Maybe even try to push another one. No, nope, they decide against it. Instead, they put their eyes onto the Dark Slayer, instantly starting it up. Beautiful macro there. They're probably gonna get this. Yep, very simple. Um, not much they can do. Three versus five. Team Flash, that is, are not able to um, defend that. F FL ADC, of course, a very good player himself, knows that, cannot get Slayer, just go to the other side of the map, try to get something there, try to at least get this dragon. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but it is around 700 gold, so, you know, still always want to pick that up, and it also, um, if they didn't get it, the enemies would have just taken it right now for free, so, because you don't really want to fight the enemies right now with the Slayer buff, it doesn't really give you a lot of stats, but it gives you the health regen, the mana regen, and it still helps, you know? Like the Darcy has low mana, without it he probably wouldn't be able to fight, but with the buff he is just chilling. And uh, you can see they are, Lindis is making their way, her way bottom, they are gonna try to kill that Kilgroff, um, but he is just absolutely life stealing, beautiful job by him there, uses his ult, uses his S2, just beats up that dragon um, to try to clear it, the Slayer dragon, um, not quite able to, so it is probably still gonna finish off that bottom tower, definitely seems like it, the bottom tower is dropping, yep, easy finish by that bottom tower, beautiful macro there, Buriram is playing this game really really well so far I have to say, they made some uh, mistakes early game that gave ADC the lead, that gave um, the... Yeah, but pretty much basically the only lead that they had, Team Flash, was all on Quick Knack, right? So, shutting him down even once, because that Yena enabled that, it was already enough to 
engage that comeback here. Beautiful gameplay. 2k gold ahead now. Um, definitely in a very good place here. That Xenial ult really didn't have to come out. I guess he was scared that they would try to dive onto that Lindis even harder. But that just means this ult is on a cooldown for like 40-50 seconds now. Um, he doesn't really have a lot of cooldown reduction, so it might even be a minute. I'm, I never played Xenial, I'm not really sure. But I know it's, it's a quite long cooldown. I think it's around 50 seconds at this point. So this is just not going to be available. They are still sending down this support uh, Xenial to defend this wave. Of course, Xenial, very classic. If you pick support Xenial, late game, you let him split push. You group with that Yena, and that just makes you... Um, he will just push. If no one shows up, he will just get all your towers. If someone shows up, he will just teleport to the team, and they will engage the 5v4, and they win, right? That is the basic uh, gist of it. And so far, they are doing a pretty good job at abusing this fact that they can have the Xenial very far away and still join with his ult. He is grouping up with them now because they are just trying to be ready for this Slayer. They already pushed out the bottom wave. He has nothing to do there anyway. This is way too far pushed away. If he goes against the, the Killgrove, the Killgrove will just beat him up and he will have to ult out instantly anyway because he can't beat the Killgrove at all. Killgrove will literally kill him if he doesn't ult away. But the good thing is Killgrove can't stop his ult either. So there we go. They just get the Slayer just like that. The Xenial pressure is too much because they know if the Krick Knight jumps onto that Lindis, um, how is he gonna do? Um, how is he gonna kill her with a Xenial ult? This is exactly the point where this team comp becomes much better than Flash's because Team Flash honestly relies on um, that Krick Knight becoming very fed and Killgrove pretty much just to carry late game, right? And um, the Kefani as well. So basically, right now in the mid game, the Kefani isn't really strong enough yet, I have to say. She needs one more item, she needs that Bow of Slaughter, she has it soon. That's when the turning point begins. And um, they need much, much more gold on the, onto that Killgrove. And then they will be able to fight this um, Buriram team. But so far, they only have that little Kricknack um, that is fed. But he, he cannot do his job because his job is to one-shot Lindis. He's not going to be able to because, as I said, the Xenial ult is going to be too powerful right now. However, also something to keep in mind, they also have an Ignis. He's never going to do a lot of damage. He's very far behind in gold. 7,000 gold. Um, barely 500 gold more than the enemy Xenial, right? Um, the support. So he is really in a bad spot, but it doesn't matter. He only needs to provide his CC, right? Um, he doesn't do a lot of damage, even if he's fed. So all that has to come out from XB is just some really nice S2 stuns, right? That's all we need. And... Um, yeah, I feel like you should have gone Devil's Awakening. I think it's better because you can spam more CC. Uh, he went for the shield enchantment. It is a decent choice as well because he already has shields and stuff. And he gets um, he gets a lot of lifesteal through the enchantment. So it is not too bad either. But uh, Devil's Enchantment, Devil's Awakening, better to support your team, which he should be thinking about here. But yeah, definitely Team Flash backed against the wall. This is game three. The other two games were um, much more convincing on the side of Team Flash. They always, it was always even, but this game is definitely the most out of their reach so far. But they are able to get a pick onto Darcy. They don't get the kill. Um, instead, the Kricknack almost dies, revives with Blade of Eternity, and is able to outplay the Yena beautifully gets a kill and it ends up being a 1 for 0 for Team Flash. It really looked very bad for like a split second there when the Quick Knight died uh, with his Blade of Eternity. It seemed like Buriram would just run over that team fight, but they weren't able to. And now you can see the Killgrove is stacking up. He is get he got his gold, he got a lot of damage now. He even built a Muramasa, which I personally haven't ever seen, I think, on a Killgrove. But um, I, I'm really not an expert on that hero. Um, 
I mean, it makes sense, right? You you would think that most of his damage is magic damage from his S2, but if you consider the enemy's tanks, which are um, a tree guy and a Xenial, um, and you have a Fafnir's, right? That's gonna be most of where most of your damage is coming from. So the Muramasa to uh, partner up with the that is gonna make a lot of sense. It's like Muramasa on Omen, right? Not every game, but sometimes it makes sense. So, even though he deals true damage, right, with his passive, because the Fafnir is a lot of damage. So, there we go, they are moving onto the Slayer, they were able to get a little pick there, they were able to um, get that dragon, and now they're completely taking control of this game. Um, you know, seeing from this bird eye view, you may think, wow, they only got two kills and a dragon, and they instantly gained the whole map, they instantly, or not even that, they gained one kill and they gained the second kill and they gained the dragon and it all snowballs. And you might be thinking, how is that happening? How is Buriram, they were winning a second ago. How are they not just barging into them and just beating them in a teamfight? Now, the thing is, it's not only about the gold, it's a lot of these, a lot of, um, in MOBAs, it's a lot about the positioning, right? And the positioning, if you have the vision advantage, if you are winning in the vision game, your positioning is gonna matter a lot, right? I mean, it's gonna improve a lot, right? Because Team Flash basically gained one kill, they were able to take control of the whole jungle vision, and through that, they can choose the fight. They can choose the fight at their pace, and they can just set it up perfectly for them, to fit them. They can have their little Ignis piece wherever he, they want it. They can have their Kilgrove piece wherever they want it, right? If you imagine a chessboard. So they are just gonna end up winning. Even though the game state hasn't changed much in terms of gold, they are able to do all of these things because suddenly the enemies are in poor positions where they get caught out by that Crick Knack. Suddenly that Crick Knack that was fed is gonna do start doing work. And this is basically just how these high level teams operate. Um, both of these teams are undeniably really insanely good and um, you can see Team Flash ends up getting the comeback, uh, playing really safe, they got one pick and the pick wasn't even um, through a mistake. The Yina got a little bit too greedy and tried to kill the Kricknack and um, he outplayed her, he just ulted instantly back onto her, bursted her down and just, just based off that fact they are able to get the combat, and I want to see the damage numbers because I know you guys like to see them. But um, anyway, you can see these games are really like threading on a very thin needle, um, and yeah. Let me just see if I can get to the damage numbers here. I really dislike that they always show um, the highlights first. But I guess I they have to pull. Uh, the damage numbers up. Come on, man. There we go. There we go. The builds, the stats. FL Ellie got the MVP. I think he did like 35% damage. There we go. 21% uh, on Quick Neck, 35% on um, Kefani, of course. As I said, late game, she's going to do the most work. And you can see it is pretty similar on both sides. Um, ADC doing the most, um, I mean, Marksman doing the most damage, as expected. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you want to see more of the AIC, or if this is enough, um, or if you would prefer normal gameplays. And, um, yeah, other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out, boys. Bye-bye.